power. Um, then you've got your drinking water hose to 30 tanks of one of those. And the bottom one there is your great water hose for drainage. All worth 200 bucks. So, get you started. Basically, I go around the outside and I go through all the inside stuff. Right. Um, if you've got any questions, while we're at the three. Have you had a camera in No? Have you turned them off trial, basically? Thank God for that. I think it's been... You'd be surprised about people that turn up and you can pick up a brand new motor that's 24 foot with a big F truck, having a turned off trial. I've done a lot of times. That's scary. Okay, so this is a full off-road coupling. So with these ones, we've got that little dust cover, shin protector, um, out with some dome pins. So it goes onto your vehicle. And then you can lock it in place. So locking it on, this little cap goes over as well, so it's A, it's a dust cap, but also a safety latch. So if I put it on, it won't clip on. So to lock it, red button down, yeah. that slides it onto that piece. And you've got plugs at the back, you line them up, and it clips on. That way you know it's definitely locked onto the vehicle. Yeah. Popping them off. Push the red button down, Now, being off-road coupling has been done a little way around, so 4360 360 both directions, uh, which means it's also a friction point, so it needs to be greased on a regular basis. Very simple there, just standard grease. Yeah, yeah, I'm axle grease is the best one to go. Down at the handbrake, chains have got little hooks to keep them off the ground. Now, this one is a breakaway system. So, this will come off the vehicle, it starts to disappear, it pulls this pin and applies the brakes to clean. So this one needs to be connected direct to the car, not to any of the shackles or hitch or chain. So that way it does its job for the next day. Standard jockey wheel. Then we got the 12 pin plug. So this is where all of your lights and power etc. goes into the van. So the smaller ones are all the trailer lights on the outside. Larger ones are any powers and triggers that it needs. So with these ones, they have a three-way fridge. Yeah, three-way. Um, so they have a power supply and a, and a trigger that turns it on and off. Because when these are travelling, they run on a 12 volt, but it runs off your car's 12 volt. So and it's got a switch that turns it on and off. So when you start the car, it comes on. When you start the car off, it turns off. So, um, so it's going to have those off the So have you got that one on your vehicle? Which tows the caravan already, so it's has good to go. Has it got a 12-pin? Yeah. 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 Ye
I've now got a sensor that actually goes in the bottom of the bottle so I can tell exactly where they're at. Yeah. Right, um, now, the box. Uh, it's got a lot of seals on it here, a nice and waterproof uh, gas trucks to hold up out of the way. Now, if they do start to leak, they're adjusting it. So, a little lock nut on here, loosen it off, screw that in and out to get that nice and tight again on those seals. Two jerry can holders. Yeah. On the side there, you know, uh, water tap. Yeah. That just uses your caravan's water system. So either mains or uh, tank water, whatever you're using. <coughs> okay. So these ones, push in, lift up, turn them 180. Nice and tight seals. Um, always make sure you lower these doors down nice and gently. So you let them slam. No, no, well, I'll actually snap these in past. The only way to replace them is to pull this silicon arm so I fix the surround out because they're screwed in from underneath. So full galvanised box, yeah. all the way through, it has a little work light on it. Yeah, it's a good jack, leg wind up. So that one, just so you can wind up your leg up and down, support legs. So these ones. So yeah, I'll be in there there 10 times. <laughs> so grab the lever, pull that lever, lower them down. Then that winder goes onto there, wind those legs down. Yeah. Now you'll notice that they actually still move. So when that when the van's on it, you're still gonna get movement out of it. Right. Actually better off to try to pop it out there, because when it goes down, it's nice and secure and firm. You're not gonna get any moving in the van at all. You're a lot more stable. Up. Make sure that one's gone back in, otherwise that can fall back down on you. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> Don't have that once. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, we fucked it on the edge of the drama. Bang! Oh, oh that was the leg. <laughs> yep. Um, your gas bayonet. Yep. So, yep. so if you want to catch uh, a gas appliance to the van, that one there can... So it's a bayonet fitting, so it's different. Yeah. Um, so it's a uh, push-in fitting, so you're going to push it in to rotate it and pull up here. Um, now with the gas regulations on the caravan, any appliance you attach to the caravan's gas system is required to have a flame out So yeah, whoever so doesn't have one, there's only a couple on the market. There's only the stainless steel marine jobs that they have on boats, um, and the flight of ground, um, and another one called Sisla. So we haven't have one yet. We're listening to see if they do. We're going to have to. Nah, nothing to do Um, now, awning. Mm -hmm. With these ones, you've got the um, two arms and the roll one. They have the whole box on them. So to unlock them, there's a little slide latch up on here. So, and it's tongue and groove. So it's got a groove on this yeah. one. So you actually got to slide it up. So then it's two arms. So it's easy if you wiggle them. That one, because if you try them, you won't get it in. So undo the knob and that one. You can either have the door open or closed. Up to you. Always make sure they come out together. So you can either use the stick. I actually prefer to have this at the door so I can walk up down the stairs. Yeah. I'm pulling up like an easy cut. Right, pull it all the way out. So there's two positions you can pull the gas to. You have it so the seam here is at 9 o'clock. Okay, so let the water right off the straight away, all the way. Or you can do it all the way out, and then this goes up and the water hits you and comes with that up. So always make sure that you're ready for the outfit that you took this. One way out the other, so that the water's going to run off. If water hits this, at some point you want to cool back up in here, and let's get the stretch in the back. Cold water. Not more fun. Oh, no. So then we bring this one out, so it slides out, pop down the button, yep. locks him into place. There you've got a, um, a lift handle, and then you've got the lock itself. 
I'm going to hold that up while you, while you slide up. And on the other side, take it up to about a head height. You get found my replacement. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. I only do this three times a day, five days a week. Now with this one you want to get all nice and secure. So this is all really loose and flapping around. This skin is going to flap around to make lots of noise. So to get it tight, um, you can bring it down a little bit. Unless you've got a three really step ladder, um, bring it down. You want to get this skin tight. So to do that, pull down on this arm. That's how much more tight that gets. Lift it up, pull that trigger, take it about three quarters of the way in, that way it's going to be about right. This is spring loaded, so push that one back because it will give out. Now, before you even bring this one out, make sure you have your pegs in your right through, have them here ready to go. Yeah, sure. You should never leave this thing unattended. Um, at some point, you get a puff of wind, like over the roof or into the wall, uh, it's not so much money, but the cost to repair them is the time it's going to get the parts. Since COVID has been a nightmare. Six to nine months for one of these. Just for the long one. Yeah, nightmare. It is getting better, but So, take it down at the base. Put a rope on it, put a strap on it. Um, obviously, you want to get that to the right height again. Uh, again, having that run off it, uh, one or two holes when it's in different. that wall off. Uh, and we also now want to tighten this one. So what I do, take it down, put the rope on it, but then I'll get my wife to lean on it. That way, I'm, she's pulling out here, I can undo that knob and pull it out, get the skin nice and tight. Pretty quick and easy. Yep. And it's about putting it all away. You retired yet? Uh, December. Tied it once, it's boring. Lucky bastard. <laughs> oh, back in. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so always make sure that that's um, clipped back on. Um, and then now we need to lower this one down. So lift it up. So box in. It just sits on that silver bolt in place. Under that one. Come on, come on. Come on. Uh, I've got long enough legs. Uh, now we need to bring this arm up. So under that bolt. Push down this button. Mm -hmm. Alright, so once you've got both those upper arms, <coughs> you can go right to the bottom of that gun. 
Now you'll see on here, you get all this ripple effect. That's caused by this strap. Everyone puts it in the same spot and build up pressure, mm. causing that. The easiest way to reduce it is just to taper it so it doesn't sit on itself. That way it's not going to do this. It does come out to the sun, but. No, now these are spring loaded, so make sure you hang on to it when you release this trigger. Um, and also stick your finger in here. Pull down, release that trigger. And then just as you go up, just taper it so it doesn't sit on itself. Set it up on the door so I can actually just walk up the stairs basically. Mm -hmm. like that. that one up there is in there. Slams into that, potentially break that match. Mm -hmm. But then that's already locked, so all we need to do is lock the arm off. So that one squeeze them together, line up them, hug and move, tighten that one up, and then you can up. Across. 
handcuffs. Back to the center. And that one clips on, away you go. Pull up, go backwards, that comes up. Now, the latches on these aren't adjustable at all. That's why I say that you need to give the slam from time to time. Mm. Temperature zones can actually change that people's frame and how it sits yep. and stuff. Mm. So sometimes people struggle to close it from the inside. Mm. So when that happens, it's usually winter because the aluminium hold it down here around mm. this body part when you close it. So that way it will then bring all these four latches up and over. They're actually going to take drop in here. Mm. You can actually come down and then up into that. Mm. That's why they're stiff. Which is great for you to take the seals on and actually seal the door. Yeah. Um, now, light, that's got the pretty little blue light. Look away when I turn the white one on, it's bright as hell. Uh, step, spring, spring loaded, so lift up. Pop the Bring them out. Back in back. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's got four bolts, two on each side. Um, so when it gets a bit stiff or loose, so you can adjust that. So just tighten it and listen to those ones off. Um, don't use any sprays on them um, because the level will make it worse. So, and that button does it too? Yeah, you just push through the button. Yeah. 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 Close the door. Oh, okay. Close it. Close it. It'll close easy at the moment. So just pull the door. Pull it in. Okay, just pull it and then you lock that one. Big hole. Yeah. And that's the problem. Most people like their skin. Slam it. Slam it. Slam it. Slam it. You're not slamming it. You're not slamming it. You're not slamming it because the seals are still new. You're scared you're going to break it. I've had kids swimming off it now. I've only had one break in the last two years. So the way that my kids swing off of ours, nee! I'd swing on the door! And then uh, we'll lock it that way. Still, let's go down. Get it? Good. Yeah. You, you need to use your big girl muscles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a gentle girl. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. Real up the top here we've got your camera for out the back. Now that camera has vision and audio. So and the vision starts from about two meters out. So anything you can there is the one spot. So don't stand too close, you get one over. Um, now, since you knew the camera then, I'll give you some little hints so you have less robust discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that. Uh, the polite way of putting it. Not a screaming match. Um, so the best thing to do is actually both get out and have a look at the site you're backing into. Talk about where you're back doing. So look for things that are obstructions, which is trees, branches, power poles, water taps. The one that everyone forgets and can't see is the bollards. So lots of caravans come back in a lovely yellow spot down this side. Um, because it's on your blind side as a driver, you can't see it. Um, so both get out, have a look at the site, have a conversation. I know that's not good. Um, and then have a plan and away you go. And you're going into the back in the caravan parks, always drive past the slab with it facing the passenger side. So that you drive past, so that, you know, that trail is where the slab is, drive past it and then you can reverse on it. That way you can actually see your awning side up against that slab edge. It's a lot easier. You try and go from this way back, you're totally relying on the person at the back of you, guiding you into that little hole. Right. Come up with a plan, use some sort of communication besides screaming out the window. So phones or radios make a big difference. Yeah. So you're like, like with <coughs> um, So once you've got it in, the way you go. Um, I got to the point where my wife was giving me lots of robust discussion whilst we were backing in. So I said, fine, you can back it in. So I put her in the driver's seat, and now she backs in better than I do. So okay. We went and practiced. Um, at shopping centre car parks. And that's the worst one to do. Yep. One question, number five. Yep, it's coming.
<laughs> yeah, I think it was. <laughs> number plate's no, coming. That's number Do that plate. right at the end. Uh, um, so yeah, communicate's a big key. So on the back wall here is the vents. So access to the back of the shower. Yep. Um, and also, it's a fully sealed unit inside and the roof's one piece, so it gives us an access point. The lights are LED, so we've got stop tail lights and a turn signal. They do build up compensation in some places mm -hmm. around, around the country. So if it gets watery, they do have vents in the trains away. Rear bars rated to 150 kilos. So with that one, um, so you can put stuff on the back here. But every kilo you put on the back of the caravan takes half a kilo of the ball weight. So if you get too light, it'll sway when you carry on. Um, so also under ADR, you can't obscure these lights by 45 degrees in any direction. So I don't think you really probably get on here like some pole or something like that. Rated 150 kilos, but that's only 32 on it. Don't overload the back. <coughs> now, uh, another storage compartment around here. Uh, again, fully galvanised box. Yep. Large enough to store a generator in them. Um, make sure you don't run it in there, put it away cool. Um, well, unless you want to gas some of that ensuite. It's more dead or alive. Oh, damn. Should have fixed that before you go. <laughs> I was just talking about you're not insured. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. That's where you put the generator in and run it and then gas the person out the old way. Make sure you sure. No, 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 no suggestions to either of you. Right, this is the old job all the ladies love to do. <laughs> so is that a no from you? That's a no. This is why we just went to a composting toilet so I don't have to spend the dark point and it's that dark thing. Yeah. Okay, I have found 35 women in the world that do do it. I've done it. Yeah. So just in case okay. you break both of his arms and legs, <laughs> you'll need to do it yourself. So to get it out, you'll lift up this little green tab and unlocks it and it pulls out. If it doesn't come out nice and easy like that, it means the inside oh. handle um, is, is oh. still out. So you need to make sure it's in and it'll come out. So you've got a lift handle at the top here. Yes, that's chest water. I hope he's having it. has got water in it already. Uh, now, so you've got that carry handle and this one here pulls out. So, and a set of wheels, so. Carry on luggage. Now, to empty it, you swivel this one out or to take off this cap. Now, this cap is slippery. So make sure you take it off away from the dump point and put it on the ground. <laughs> no one's going to risk Otherwise, it. Otherwise, it will fall out of your hand at some point. <laughs> <and> down the <laughs> hole. Good luck fishing that one out. Yeah. Go to the shop, buy a new one. Um, now, when you're ready to empty it, this is an air release. So you push that button. So get down nice and close to it, hold that button and pour it out. That way it's going to come out one nice steady stream, go back and the explosion. But so once he's done that, we're going to throw some fresh water in it, wash it around, empty it out again. Now you'll hear that rattle. That's an, that's an indicator float. So when it's inside, there's two lights and it tells you when it's full. So if it's rattling, it's all good. If it's not, you might have an obstruction. So you've got to get in there to clean it out. So there is maintenance involved with these things each year, um, or when it needs to be done. But all of these seals have silicon grease on them. So, so this is the main seal that goes between the two units. So you've got to keep grease on that one on a regular basis. So And it keeps us nice and soft as well. So, so slide that one, grease it up. Now, if you've got that float not moving, open it up. Push that tab in, slide that one out. That way you can get in there with a the hose and brush that, that. It's on this side of the wall. Oh, okay. Clean that one out. So now maintenance wise, again, so you've got this seal here. You've also got a seal under this one. This is a vent, so when it plums back in, it vents to the outside. So you rotate that one around, again, get a grease on that one. Box in. Now there's a really big one under here and then two rods on top of this. Get that one off. You've actually got to rotate it that way. So hands, push both hands, push and pull because it is tight. So that one's got to be closed, and this one's got to be out for okay. it to rotate around. On the other side, again, another big rubber seal, and then those two rods. They all need silicon grease on. That's that float. Yep. Okay, that's the last hand that goes in there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, make sure it's all back on. Close all those off, 
bring that one back in. So that's the only time you ever want to open this, is to do that maintenance, not when you're emptying it. Yeah. Yeah. If you open that when you're emptying it, good luck. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, putting it back away, push it in, and make sure that it has locked in. Yeah. That green tab's in. Once it locks in, you'll see all these big beats and that just line up. They all line up, all, all does all its jobs. Yeah. Now, make sure you use the correct toilet paper. So you want biodegradable and septic safe paper and also the correct chemical because that then breaks down all the solids so the twos and the paper mm -hmm. by the time you're going to empty it it will stay unless you're lucky enough to get a compost mm -hmm. how long have you got out of it so far? we literally only just got it fitted last week oh okay yeah. we had a cassette and so with two kids and the two of us the cassette was lasting us three so maybe four days and I was four, like mm. we were at four months with the dry oh, that's good oh yeah the, the pee bottles every bloody day <laughs> so I don't know if it is for any other or not yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but it's easy to deal with. It is, yeah. yeah. Except when you have to do the dry. Yeah. That's, that's not so fast, believe me. <laughs> At least it's not every week. Though. Yeah. Right, oh, now water supply. So you've got two tank you got tank water on yeah. these on board. So there's two 95 litre tanks. So right, with filling these ones up, that's the fun part. Everyone seems to struggle. On the tank itself, it's got a breather up the top. With that, it's got a hose that comes up to the top of the villa here. So, what you've got to do is push the water in to force the air out of here. <coughs> so, there's a little breather at the top here. A little hole there. Yep. That hose that comes from the tank to there gets water in it, causes an air blockage. So you need to force that water out of it. So, most people stand here with a hose and try and fill it and it takes forever. The trick is, is push it down as far as you possibly can. Causing that, that forces the water into it, pushing the air out of that breather. You're getting water coming out of that, hot, that filler, keep going, it's not full. You want it coming out of a nice steady stream out of that breather. So when the little boys pee, you know it's 100% full. <coughs> now the easiest way to do that is you can take the end off the hose every time or the cheap of the hardware store, 13 mil irrigation feed. So just a bud and it's a click connector. Click it on, shove it in the hose, click it. Push it in, way it goes. Yeah. Nice and quick. Seven minutes to fill the tank, or two litres. <clears throat> so, rolling round with clicks, and they're key lockable. Did you win one? Yeah. No, two different key numbers. Uh, and that, the beauty of all of these is that key's got a, a number on it, and so is the lock. Uh -huh. So, by the look at that, where are we? So, yeah. <coughs> so you'll have one, two, three, four, five. So you'll have six keys or one. <coughs> now, other water supply, you've got your main water. So with that one, that white hose just clicks over there, onto your town tap, away you go. With those ones, always make sure you keep this one covered. Uh, it's an open fitting, which means dirt, plants, all that sort of stuff can build nests in it. Um, so you don't want to get jerk dirt in there, otherwise they will open or shut. <coughs> it's a, what they call a pressure reduction valve. Sorry. <coughs> That's what's giving us grief. Just get a blank plug or something over that. Yeah, easiest way to do it is a click connector. Yeah. So the garden hose connector, silicon the end off it, just clicks on and off. Yeah. I had one here, it's it's gold. <laughs> yeah, we got the same. Yep. Uh, but there is that big grass valve at the end of that. That's the pressure reduction valve. That manages the flow going in and out of your van. So if it does get um, reduced flow, you need to pull that off and clean it out. So to take it off, uh, take it off the bracket. And then look, there's two big spam locks on the end of it. So a couple of good sized shifters. Undo it, pull them apart, clean the muck out of it, put it back together and away you go again. So easy enough to maintain. Uh, water ta big white tap there yep. is the grey water tank. Yeah. So that's currently in the closed position. Uh, the black hose that we've given you just slides onto that barb. Just turn it down. Now legally you're supposed to retain it whilst you're driving. I don't probably mind open for the last bits to come out. Because that way there's about three litres on the bottom usually. Yeah. So that sloshes around and gets all the last that muck out. And when with the, the water tank, because they're both 90 litres, a lot yep. of weight. Obviously for balance I'll just do Probably 
depends. Um, now, there's, so they've got taps on both of these tanks on down the bottom of them, which is one of these. So you can choose to use both tanks at the same time or one tank at a time. I use one at a time. So one on each side of the tank, <coughs> and they're both on the same. So, you think of the, of the weight and the balance of time. So with that one, I use the back tank first. That way you're giving that weight at the front. So open up the back tank, close off the front one. There is, a, there is a gauge inside that will tell you when they're empty, but easiest way to tell them is start to splutter out your taps. If you're getting water splutter, stop using them straight away. Otherwise you're going to pull air through your lines and you get water hammer and water pump. Stop using it, come and swap them over and away you go. January's, the only way to get rid of that air is to flush your water out of your lines through. And you're off duty you're going to waste a lot too much water. <coughs> Um, so yeah, that's the best way to go. But always, if you want to keep it a bit lighter, always travel with that uh, water in the front tank. Sure. Um, you can have the tank one empty, but at least have some front wall label. It does have some tow belt. They're designed to carry that 190 litres. Yeah. Yeah. It actually keeps them a lot more stable. Uh, our fridge, three-way, so it's got a, a vent down the bottom here to keep it cool. It's all up there and then it's also right up on the top of the These are a three-way fridge, so it uses ammonia, which is a gel. It heats that up, turns it to a gas, and goes into a cycle. So you need to make sure you keep this nice cool air coming in here, which then that hot air goes right out the top, and they work really efficiently. Um, if you're going to do dirt roads, you've got a semi-off-road van, um, don't cover them over. The worst thing you can do is cover these over, because it'll actually make your fridge run hotter, means it then gets cold, then the fridge gets hot. <coughs> if you want to stop dust getting into the van, I use a chuck swipe over it. So um, duct tape and chuck swipe over in front of it. Still gets that airflow through and it's a lot, it's still runs really well. I actually use um, the carb cool fans as well. So if you so if between we, fans to uh, flow that airflow. If we're on a dirt road, um, yep. so would we be better off turning the fridge off while we're on a no. dirt road? No. No. Um, yeah, always let your fridge on. Because <coughs> otherwise your food's going to get hot. Sure. Yeah. Salmonella's not a pretty thing apparently. <coughs> so if you want to cover it over, as I said, put a chuck swipe over it. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do with ours. Um, I don't even do that anymore. The biggest problem with cabinetry in these things is there's big holes everywhere. So you've got to go through and find those holes and, and then help block them off. Especially the fridge one. The fridge actually has a hole cut through when the blood comes through. So that's the biggest input. So dust will come into here and then find its way through that hole and then get into the camera trip. So the big thing I do with all of my trips, if every time I go away on a dirt road, is go through the van and make sure it's all still sealed. These things are a big wooden box and a cyclone. So things move around, um, pipes move, etc. So any penetration that goes through the floor, get upstairs with it, someone upstairs with a torch you down underneath with a silicon gun and any light that you can see coming around through those penetrations, floors, pipes or, or cables, re silicon it. That way you're not going to get anything coming up into that cabin and into your cabinetry. Yeah. Um, <coughs> have a dust reduction system so that actually then pressurises the cabin. We don't get any dirt coming in where we have it all now. Um, I did a little experiment, went out to bird for last night which is, that's one of the chucks ones. That was the one that was at the door. So if you have a look at it, there's no dust on it at all. Because the dust reduction system is actually pushing that dirt out. It's not actually keeping it in the van. So yeah. They might be expensive, but they're worth their weight in gold. We've had a horror story. Um, we've done three laps in Australia. So um, our first few vans, we didn't have any sort of dust production at all. We used to cover that over with cardboard and, and, and seal them tight, turn them into vacuum cleaners. The, uh, the road from Flinders Ranges to Arkarula, it's it all dust, you got that much in a bucket from inside the cabin, inside the cabinetry. Did that three days in a row. You know, she wasn't laughing at the end of that one. No. No, very unhappy wine. <laughs> Drank four bottles of scotch on me. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, if you do get a flat tire, Jack looks in this one, yep. locks on to this fella here. It's got a little arm on it with a groove. So the arm goes into here and slots up onto that groove, locks it onto that, onto the van, so make it nice and secure. Then you can jack it up and change the tire. 
with that, make sure you have it on the vehicle. Uh, the, the, the jockey wheels aren't so low rated, so you put it on the jockey wheel and it's bent. Um, our tyre pressures, so minimum 50 psi on a single axle. There is actually a calculation that they do, which is your load rating of the tyre, the 18 on the man, calculated by the number of tyres, and gives you your actual um, psi on the But we recommend 50, that seems to be the nice nicest <coughs> on them. Um, now, hot water service. So these ones are 240M gas. So it's a 28 litre stainless steel tank. With that one, um, so you choose which one you want to use. So if you're on, on power, 240, drive grid, rather on the gas, the way it goes. So it takes about 20 or 30 minutes to heat up from cold, depending on ambient temperature. Now with these ones, they're a sealed unit, so there's nothing you need to do with them. Um, they're a stainless steel tank, 28 litres, but it still has the sacrificial anode in them. It's a little tiny piece of aluminium rod, so it needs that yeah. instead of your yeah. 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 tank. So with these ones, um, they, when they get hot, they also expand, which means they're going to have more relieve that through the valve that's on the bottom end, there's a hose. <coughs> so normal operation is dripping. You've got hot water dripping out of there, that's normal. If you're on mains water, and that, um, you're getting a steady stream of water, like a tap flow, it means that valve's not dirty and it's wedged open, and it's relieving itself out of here, so it's going to the part. Don't go into this unit, you've got to go back onto that valve, take it off, clean it out. We don't have the doing on this, they check that anode each service every year. Um, because they are the unit that's really good, they only probably got two or three years out of those anodes. So they're 12 months out of the old ones. Really good units. Um, now your batteries, do you go lithium or AGMs? These are AGMs. Yep, standard AGMs, so they've got two of them, 200 amp hours, which means you've got about 100 amp hours of use Up on top, they have a little 50 amp fuse. Um, so if there's any faults with it, that's where they'll pop them there. Um, now if you want to get access to these, these, these ones screw off. You've got to take them all the way out, then put the hooks at the top here. You slide it up, pull it towards you, take off the clamp, etc. Yeah, away you go. They do have little holes in here, so you can put a padlock on as well. Yeah. Now you see a blue Anderson plug out there. Yeah. So that's an auxiliary, auxiliary solar input. Uh, so you can plug your blanket or a panel into that. Now it's blue, which means the band manages that because it doesn't need to wing So you can plug in any, any solar panel, it flows straight into that, and the band just <coughs> the rest of the stuff on the roof and regulates it. So you don't need to regulate it on that uh, solar supply. But the blue ones are different shape and size. Yeah, so the grey won't go into the blue. <coughs> this one here is your common ground or your earth. So, um, or negative. But, so don't pull it out, don't put anything in it. Leave it alone, paint it black if you don't like it. There you go. Oh, I know. 240 power supply. So, got a little rain and dust cover, cable bug, and we've got a little clip there to hold it in place. And this one's just RCD, so the trip switch circuit breaker. Yeah. So if there's any faults, it'll pop it out here. Now, the most common faults I get with when people ring up is my 240 is not working so the trip that or well, that plug is not all the way in it's only going to be out a small amount for the not to connect same with the other end so um, all their switches that aren't turned on inside so again so tunnel loop yep. right through on here yep. now, that's, that's where you got your compliance plate so they like to have a chat about weights see how your diet's going So we got your ATM minus the tear weight. So that leaves us with about 441 load capacity. And that's empty. We've added 190. So that's your ATM, it's 2666. Two yep. And the tear weight is 2225. Yep. Um, so that leaves you with 441 kilos of load capacity. Yep. But that's empty. So we've now added 190 kilos of water, yes. 28 kilos of hot water, 18 kilos of gas, and minus that 236. So that brings you down to 205 kilos that you can now add to this as well. Yeah. The ball rating is 166, but you can go up to 10 to 7 your ATM, which will be 266. Now, just going to talk about the KPA. So 
tire pressure, 499. So I convert that across the PSI in 73. So if you've ever towed something at 73 PSI, it's bloody rough as. Oh, <laughs> Don't put it to 70. But that's the maximum tire pressure. Like if you've got heaps of weight in here, then you want to go off the tire pressure. But you do have a semi off-road van. Uh, so obviously you need to lower and raise those tire pressures to the yeah, where you're going, yeah. yeah. So if you're on corrugated roads, lower your tire pressures. Remember, it's a big wooden box um, going through a cyclone on an earthquake. So if you, if you uh, my, my theory is that size um, corrugation, about five psi. So the higher they get, the lower the tires go. Um, on good roads, I'll probably go down to about 30 psi. On but horrors, I've been down to 15. Wow. and still couldn't get around. Yeah. So now we don't intend to go anywhere that, that drastic. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be. <laughs> They're all the best spots. All the hardest places yeah. to get to are the best places to get to. Yep. So we found, found some track. Um, so yeah, that's basically your compliance. So, I highly recommend loading all your stuff in your, in your van, loading your car up full, and then the other thing you're going to take Full tanks of water, full tanks of fuel, and get both of them away. Either you get mobile people, or if we have a workshop with the full scale service. That way you'll know your ATM, you'll know your ball weight, you'll know your car's ATM, and you'll know your dry combined mass, that's the one everyone forgets. And your towing ability, so your, your towing capacity. Yeah. Right. They're, the, they're the things that the partner transport, they're the new pieces of paper for now. 